Welcome back all. Today I'm gonna go ahead and create this tutorial for you where I will show you how you can set up a proxy server, hook up machines to that proxy server, and have that proxy server forward traffic of those machines to an administrator machine. From where you will be able to control the traffic, you'll be able to say who can do what and who can not do what. <laughs> Let's put it that way, shall we? Before, and you will be able to use Wireshark to actually monitor traffic. Anyway, uh, keep in mind, this is a bit of a disclaimer, that this tutorial is part of a course on Udemy. So I will explain like 90% of things that you need to, on how you need to set this up. The only thing that I won't explain in this particular setup is, uh, not six. The only thing that I won't explain is how to install VirtualBox or some other hypervisor, but I mean really uh, you have some other videos on my channel where you can take a look how to install VirtualBox or you can take a look at thousands of videos out there on YouTube how to install some other hypervisors such as VMware or Parallels. Your operating system, your host operating system, the one that you're using is completely irrelevant whether you're using Linux, Mac or Windows, the procedure is independent of these OSs. Uh, also, you can find instructions or procedures on how to install VirtualBox on my on my Udemy courses. On my Udemy courses, they all, you, I will have a link for you down there if you want in the discussion in the description section as well. So this is a the installation of VirtualBox or some other hypervisor is fairly simple and trivial to do. Should be able to do that on your own if you can't. There are tons of videos out there on my Udemy courses on YouTube on my channel as well. Uh, on some other channels on YouTube and if you still can't do it I mean feel free to message me either here on YouTube or preferably on Udemy you don't need to buy a course or anything like that for, to get an answer from me I will gladly help you regardless of whether you have bought the course or not plus on top of that on Udemy you will always actually have the support of the community and on top of the support of the community you will also have another professional helping you out whether it it could be me could be somebody else that I have hired specific for the purpose but you will always have somebody there who will answer your questions who will answer your inquiries who will uh, care for your problem so it's not just purely community support there you do get professional help as well anyway uh, let's go ahead and begin with the explanation of the setup so as I said oops, let's move this to another monitor uh, I'm this is a virtual machine of Ubuntu here. I'm running Fedora host in the background, but as I said, uh, you can run whatever operating system you want. It's completely relevant. The only thing that's different is the installation of VirtualBox. Everything else is exactly the same. So uh, we shall have one PC, which will be our administrator PC. We shall have one server, which will be our proxy server, and we shall have another PC, which will be some client. I don't know. You can, you could have. Uh, multiple PCs here like this you could have a lot of PCs here which could all be running the problem is that I don't really have enough res resources on my current machine my new machine is coming but on my current machine I don't have enough resources to actually run 10 virtual machines at once that would completely crash my system there is no way I can do that now I could do it with uh, Docker and, con and containers, but I'm afraid that I just cannot do it as I am doing uh, on this machine as it is now. There is no way I can do that. That's kind of difficult. I mean, yeah, no uh, full virtualization would be impossible for me to do uh, with six, seven machines. I can go maximum like three, maybe four, and that's going to crash my system. But soon I'm gonna get a new machine and I'm gonna post some other courses and I think you're all going to like them very much so but it doesn't matter I mean you can clone this one machine as many times as you like and the same principle applies all you need to do is hook it up to the proxy server and have it use the proxy server to go out onto the net now this administrator machine will receive information from the server and will be able to control the server and we'll be able to f say, okay, this traffic is valid, this traffic will not be allowed, because you don't want Samantha from down in accounting to be browsing Facebook during her work hours, as that is highly unproductive. 
and you don't want Steven to go onto eBay and buy a graphics card during your work during his working hours. That's also unproductive. Uh, this is a huge problem today, and if you are if you ever plan on working as a system administrator, network administrator, especially a network administrator, you will be required to make this setup work. You will be required to operate a proxy server. Almost all offices, both small and large, all corporations, all firms, again, both small and large, they have this. It doesn't matter if you have an office of 10 people or if you have a company of 10,000 employees, you they all have proxy servers and you all will need to know how to do this. Believe me, this is one of the most common tasks that exists out there that people tend to use. Now, our workstation will be Fedora. Uh, the current release of Fedora is 23, but if it's some other release by the time you're watching this, doesn't really matter, just take that one. Our host machine will be Ubuntu, and I can shut Ubuntu down and make another Windows machine. So I can demonstrate how you can monitor traffic from a Linux machine and how you can monitor traffic from a Windows machine. Well, not really. You will monitor traffic of a proxy server. I will just show you how you can hook up a Windows machine and how you can hook up a Linux machine to a proxy server. But one of these two will need to be shut down on my machine because I won't have enough resources in the sense of hardware in order to virtualize all four of them. But I do understand that Windows is a proprietary piece of code, a closed source, and you have to pay for it. So I understand if you don't have an extra copy of Windows lying around, no big deal. Uh, nothing special there, really. You can just take a look at it. You don't need to actually emulate or buy new Windows or anything like that. Just take a look at it. Just It's basically just a few clicks in Windows to hook it up to a proxy server, and that's all that there is to it. On Linux, the procedure is somewhat different, but again, not, too ter not terribly difficult or anything like that. Uh, what you will need is VirtualBox or some other hypervisor installed. I've already explained how you can do that. I'll provide links down below. Uh, you will need to download Ubuntu and you will need to download CentOS minimal installation. Where can you get those? I'll provide links down below. Actually, I have them here, so, but it's okay. I don't need to actually use them. You can just use our favorite search engine. Started up Fedora, I've started up Firefox. So let's go ahead and over to the CentOS website, CentOS. If you have a slow connection, this might take a while, so preferably you should do this before beginning the second tutorial on the on the matter. So just go ahead and click on Get CentOS Now. You will have a link for this site. Click on Minimal ISO, and this can be sometimes a bit confusing uh, because CentOS has a lot of mirrors all around the world, lots of places from where you can download, and it's going to give you the actual country, and you can go ahead and click on this first link here disregard the uh, ones below. Remember to download the minimal ISO. Uh, you won't be able to get a full screen with minimal ISO as you won't have any sort of GUI or anything like that. There will be no graphical interface, but that is how servers are installed. They are not installed with graphical interfaces, they are installed without them. And then all the other services are installed additionally. Also, again, no graphical interface will be installed at any point of time. So. We won't be actually doing anything directly on this server. We will be controlling it through SSH. So we'll be controlling it indirectly, if you will, from a Fedora workstation, which will be which we will take as our admin machine. So just go ahead and click on the ISO here. Click on Save File. Click on OK. As you can see, I've already downloaded all three of them. And then we're going to go over to Fedora. This is pretty simple. Just uh, go ahead and do this click on workstation. You can also use Fedora as a server, but that is fundamentally stupid. Even I do believe that even the developers of Fedora did, do not recommend this. Uh, Fedora is primarily meant as a desktop edition. So go ahead and click on download, and that's going to download it for you. Then next place where we need to go is Ubuntu. Fedora is basically a testing ground for Red Hat, just so you know. Uh, and CentOS is pretty much the same as Red Hat. Uh, go ahead and go download desktop, download the 1404.3 LTS long-term support, and just go ahead and click on download, select the version that you need, 64 32-bit. Not a, not a bad idea to actually 
uh, figure out if your machine is 64-bit or 32-bit and then download the proper one. If you don't know, uh, you can download the 32-bit one and you will be safe and good to go. Okay, so now that we ha now that we know where to download all three of these things, I shall uh, give you links. So this is for CentOS, this is for Fedora. Oh, right, I didn't give you a link for Ubuntu, but that I can do on my own and I can post it here and then I'll post it in the discussion section below. So please make these preparations and then we will immediately start in the follow-up tutorial and I will show you how you can do this.